A giant bone, unearthed in a Greek temple, older than the stones around it by millions of years. Ancient accounts that claim the bodies of mythical heroes were actually found. Centuries old depictions of monsters that are curiously real. The teeth are pointed and they're pointed forward, which is correct. Could the legendary monsters of ancient Greece be based on reality? Someone could have looked at this skull and thought, well, maybe this is from a big, grotesque, one-eyed monster. Could scientific fact be written between the lines of ancient myth? Could there be as much fact as fiction in some of history's most bizarre tales? Join the investigation and hunt down the truth behind the ancient world's most fantastic tales. The many islands of the Aegean, once known as a land of gods and monsters. It is here that the mythic one-eyed cyclops hunted human flesh, where the sharp-clawed griffin defended his gold, and where Hercules, a hero three times the size of mortal men, fought the dragon-like monster of Troy. These tales, with their larger-than-life heroes and supernatural monsters, have been traced back to Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, epics that were in turn drawn from centuries of oral tradition. But what was it that first inspired these strange tales? A clue to the mystery lies here, on the island of Samos, some 200 miles from the mainland of Greece, just a mile from the Turkish border. Now a sleepy tourist village, Samos was once a powerful nerve center of the ancient world the crossroads of trade between the Aegean and the Asian East. Among these green and rolling hills, only a single lonely pillar stands to mark the spot of what was once a magnificent temple, the largest in the ancient world, erected to honor Hera, wife of Zeus and the goddess of marriage. Though sparsely populated today, Samos was once one of the richest sources of legend in the ancient world. Little wonder that Aesop, the most famous of all storytellers, is said to have been born here. In many tales, Samos is depicted as a mythic graveyard, a place of fantastic creatures. One of the oldest stories told about Samos concerns mysterious creatures called the Neades, as recorded by the Greek poet Euphorion around 220 BC. In primeval times, Samos was uninhabited, except for animals of gigantic size, savage and dangerous. With their mere roaring, they split the ground. According to the legend, these creatures shrieked so loudly that they caused landslides to collapse upon them, and this is how they all died. But the most famous Samos legend concerns Dionysus, the god of wine, and the Amazons, a tribe of gigantic warrior women who fought on foot or from the backs of their oversized war horses. They had no use for men, except to kill them in battle or mate with them for procreation, from which they kept only their female offspring. Hearing of their prowess in battle, Dionysus asked the Amazons to fight with him against the enemies of Greece. When they refused, the enraged god pursued them to Samos and there took his revenge. It was a tale familiar to folklorist and scholar Adrian Mayer, who first came to Samos in 1982. She had read an account of the battle written by Plutarch, a second century priest, who explained why one place on Samos was called Panema, the bloody field. Dionysus crossed to Samos and joined battle with the Amazons and slew many of them at that place. Owing to the amount of blood that flowed, those who saw it marveled and called it the Blood Red Field. The bones of the victims, Plutarch said, could still be seen in the reddened earth, but modern scholars had long discounted the story as being no more valid than one of Aesop's celebrated fables. Yet, 2,000 years after Plutarch wrote those words, Mayer saw them come to life. Turning a corner in the dusty museum on Samos, she encountered what locals called the Bone Room. Inside was a collection of huge fossil specimens plowed up by local farmers, still dusted with reddish earth. They found huge teeth, they found bones that were just 
three times the size of human bones. When I saw the size of the femurs, uh, the thigh bones, they were almost as tall as I was. What were these gigantic bones? Could these be the remains of the Amazons and their titanic steeds, as Plutarch claimed? Mayer, who has devoted her life to applying science to the myths and legends of world cultures, was determined to find out. Mayer would come to question what other modern historians and scientists believed. Most maintained that the ancients would not have recognized prehistoric fossils as organic remains. An encyclopedia of paleontology published in 1997 stated that such fossils would be too big to be noticed, or if noticed, taken seriously by the ancients as the bones of animals. But to Mayer, Plutarch's descriptions of a gigantic battlefield sounded too detailed to be the product of mere fantasy. She decided to put the question to Nikos Salunius, a Greek-born paleontologist who had been cataloging fossils on Samos since 1978. When I talked to Nikos about what Plutarch had written, Nikos said, I've been there, I know that place. I know exactly where it is. I know where the battlefield must have been. It's red ground and it's surrounded with white bones coming out. Only by chance, after a series of fires in the 1980s and 90s, had the site been revealed. This area was covered by pine forest and very, very thick undergrowth. So a lot of these sediments were concealed by the vegetation. But there were two big fires that burned most of the central part of the island to the ground completely. And that exposed a lot of sediment and a lot of fossils and a lot of geology that was not visible before. What was exposed, Salunius believed, was Plutarch's blood-red field. Most of the island uh, is this kind of a whitish color uh, sediment. And this place is unique in having this deeper red sort of layer below. People who noticed the red stained earth call the place by the name of Panama, which means bloodbath. For Mayer, it was a revelation that opened up a Pandora's box of questions. Was Plutarch's account based not on myth, but on scientific evidence? What had the ancients found on Samos? Prehistoric bones that inspired their myths and legends? Or proof that Homer's tales of giants and monsters might actually be true? For the ancients, Samos was a mystical place, a legendary battlefield where gods and Amazons clashed and primordial giants died. As a child, paleontologist Nikos Salunius visited his grandparents on Samos every summer and was always eager to explore the place his grandmother called an ancient graveyard. When I was seven years old, I came to this place um, because I was naturally interested in bones and I found my